Hey, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today I am working on finishing a dewdrop shawl, and I'm making it on my S Loom from Knitting Board. You can get that at knittingboard.com. And I am uh, I'm excited because I have taken forever to get this thing done. It has been... <laughs> It's been, it's been way too long since I started this. Uh, whoops, sorry, I'm hitting my table. Hello and welcome if you're joining me. Um, this is a, a late, <laughs> late broadcast. Normally I'm in the morning during the day and uh, <laughs> if you have followed me at all, I was sick all last week and um, my kids are, we're on vacation right now with the kids and we're also selling our house. So it's been crazy. I actually overslept this morning, probably because I needed rest. <laughs> and then we had a couple of showings yesterday. We have another one tomorrow. So anyway, I'm glad you guys are coming on to see me. I just figured I'll just film this um, as a live broadcast and let people kind of watch. And um, that way, if I'm backed up on being able to get the footage on YouTube, at least you'll have somewhere to find it. And it's perfect fall colors, so I need to just get this done, right? And in favor of um, UFO um, November of finishing our projects, I'm getting this done tonight. <laughs> so I will do, I will film as much as possible. I don't know how long this bind off is going to take me, but we're going to see. So welcome, everyone. I'm going to go back and say hi. Hello, Shirley and Stephanie, Ada, Jean, Joanne. Ada, it is great. Thank you. Yes, I did need the rest. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'm going to get started here and um, I'm going to tell you what you need. Um, you're going to need your uh, an S loom. Uh, it doesn't matter which S loom you're using, just one that's the big Afghan loom that's kind of shaped like an S. And um, you are, um, you're going to need your yarn that you want to use for it. I'm using a lace weight yarn. Um, I can't even remember what it, what it is. It looks like this. It was in one of those big hanks and it's got like all these kind of fall colors, but it's also got pinks in there and a little bit of green and it's got a sparkle, as you can see, kind of a gold sparkle spun inside. Really pretty. I got it at DFW Fiber Fest a few years ago trying to remember the content. Sorry if anybody knows this, but it was wound in like one of those big old hanks. So um, I'm not even using the full thing, but it was one of those like monster double size. <laughs> so I could probably get another one out of this. Um, and then of course your your hook, uh, I'm sorry, your, yeah, your loom pick, um, loom hook, sometimes people refer to him as a hook. And then you're gonna need a, um, you're gonna need a crochet hook that's um, the right size for the yarn weight that you're using. Um, this is a USE or it says 45 cents. So I don't know the millimeter on this one. And, um, this one is an unknown. So basically I just grab something that I, let's see, is it written on here? Bifocals G size G. Um, anyway, just something that's, um, appropriate for the, um, yarn weight that you've got. And then, um, we've got scissors. I've got a book and I'm using the book plug. Here's my book. Um, I'm using the book to measure out and put the um, fringe on and I'm using for this one I'm just doing well, it's still gonna be long fringe but it's gonna be about eight and a half inches long because I'm winding it from uh, the end here so we're gonna make fringe and bind off a lot of people love the dewdrop but um, are scared about using the bind off that I have on there so we're gonna bind off putting the fringe on that edge how does that sound and that is the bind off so let's do that and you can use this technique for um for any um uh, adding fringe to the end of something um as well um now we're just going to put it on the live stitches on the end if that freaks anyone out you can just um tie them together it's really super simple it's just going to take me a little bit longer and if you stick around for the live broadcast um what I'll do is I'll show you the cast on. So I'm gonna sort of go backwards, but this has been sitting on my loom for a while and I wanna get this thing like done and wrapped up. So um, I'm just gonna kinda let it go and y'all talk amongst yourselves. And um, 
Hopefully you like it. <laughs> if I don't ever get it on YouTube, it will be on Facebook. So um, what I'm going to do is um, kind of explain it um, like someone's watching it, um, me editing it. So you might see me kind of editing myself um, in here. And sometimes I talk to you guys if you've never joined me for a live tutorial on Facebook Live. Okay, so here we go. And um, you will notice there's a couple of marks on my loom. And I'll talk about that in the beginning. Um, which you'll see at the end of this video. So if you're seeing the replay on it, the marks on the loom are sort of my little marks for where I want to begin and end my yarn and where I'm kind of skipping a holding peg. So if you kind of notice in the beginning, if you don't have patience for tonight to watch the whole thing, you can kind of make a mental note or do a screen grab or something or come back tomorrow. So anyway, all right, just a minute and I'll flip it around. And if uh, we, t if, if we're lucky and I have enough battery, <laughs> I'll end up putting in all my little, oops, my little model over here that you can't see. And I'll let you see the whole thing. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm seeing everyone. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, let's flip this thing. Okay. getting my um i've got a battery pack <laughs> i'm having to plug my phone into a battery pack because it is low and yeah so here's my tools that i've got and we're gonna wow there's a hair on my table isn't that nice pets and kids and yeah <laughs> we don't have any pets here but you know how it is we have pets okay <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay, so I've come to the end of my knitting. I have knit 100 rows of the dewdrop stitch. And of course, you can go longer if you like. Uh, I'm back on my beginning peg here. And it's, of course, one over from where this little carrot is, the starting peg. So it's over here. Again, I've got marked with a little D or a circle or something. And uh, we're going to begin this bind off, but the way they're gonna do it is we're not actually going to um, touch this anymore. Uh, I'm going to um, just cut a length that's about the width of a book, and you'll see my pre-wrap stuff. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Uh, I'm just gonna cut a length that's about the length of the fringe I want, which is the short distance of my book. And that's it for that. And then I have wrapped around my um, my extra yarn here around this book. Um, well, specifically 57 times. And what I'm doing is that's because um, that's how many stitches I have. But really, what I'm doing is um, I'm going to do groupings of three um, around my whole loom here. And um, for each set that I have, these big ribs for these columns of stitches. And so I'm going to have the clusters of three. Um, three fringe. So I've got it around here really about 60 times, but um, I'll just grab three strands each. So now that I've got that, um, I've wrapped it around my book and this is going to get me my length of my fringe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this as a guide and get my scissors out and just cut along the edge here. And I'm just using the side of the spine as a guide. I'm not, I'm not trying to like necessarily go up the center here because that would be really hard. Okay, so we've got our fringe right here. I'm gonna grab a couple of these. Okay, whoops. And I'm a nice hairy mess over there. So you may want to get something to set it aside and maybe not do this in your lap on the go. That would be a mess. Okay, so I've got three of them and I'm gonna make them sort of equal here, make a little loop. And then I'm going to pick up with my tool here. I'm gonna pick all three of these strands up, one, two, three, and four includes that original 
uh, strand, uh, that original loop, because on the beginning and the ending pegs, we have um, four. So I'm gonna take my crochet hook, which is approximately the size uh, that will fit the yarn, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead on this last one here because I have this yarn that's coming through. I'm gonna um, pull this on through, um, but I'm gonna leave it open and go back through those loops. So I'm just trying to get that, um, that yarn uh, in there good. Now I've got my three uh, strands here for my fringe, and I'm gonna go right in the middle of this loop here, and I'm gonna pull it all the way through, okay? And keeping this loop on here, I'm gonna um, wrap around. So all these here, so it'll be like six on the end here, and I'm gonna pull it all the way through. So now I can tighten that up and have those all together as the fringe together on that one. So now I'm done on that, and I can kind of push it to the back here. And I'm gonna pick up my next ones, and get three more of these strands here. So three more fringe. Okay. Pick up three, one, two, three. I'm gonna put my hook in. Grab my fringe in the middle of this loop and pull it through. Okay, and then wrap around and then pull that on through. Make sure that's nice and tight. And that's it. So let me get closer in and you can see that a little bit better. Okay, y'all, I'm just setting up for the shot, so uh, be patient with me while we're live. Okay. For you that are here, you wanna tell me if you think this looks good, and then I'm gonna tighten this up here. Okay. Let me get three more. I'll go ahead and get a few of these ready. Hi, Yolanda, I see you jumped on. sort of see these here okay can you guys see this shot a little bit better okay so I've moved my camera a little closer so you can see it we're gonna pick up these three stitches one two three this is right before this big dew drop here okay so these are the holding pegs in the back and it makes that really wide um, drop stitch okay oh I'm showing you off camera. It's this really wide drop stitch back here. So now that I've got those, I'm gonna hold it, keep those loops open, grab my crochet hook, insert it through those loops, because they're nice and big, and when I use a nice small hook like this one, I can get it easily through. And so I've looped over the three strands here for my fringe, and I'm grabbing them and pulling them tight and then pulling through these three strands. Leave that loop out there, wrap it with the tails, there's six of them, pull that on through. Okay, again, there's six tails because I'm doing um, three strands of fringe and flipped over, it looks like six. So look how pretty that fringe looks. Isn't that nice? So now we've got, see how the ends of these are all gonna have this nice long strand and you're not having to do any kind of complicated and backward um, <laughs> bind off. So this is just a bind off with the strands here on it. And then I will show you um, what it looks like when we're complete. So just keep going around, again, picking these up, grabbing your, um, grabbing your strands, making sure they're even. I'm kind of doing this off camera a little bit. Make sure you've got that crochet hook because it's easier with the hook than your loom tool. You can try it, I'm not saying you can't, 
but I don't think it's as easy. And then I kind of pull back on it a little bit, go through, you want to tilt it so it goes to that little teardrop, wrap it again, pull it on through, make sure you've got all of them, and get it all the way through and it's nice and stuck, snug, okay? And if you're not sure, I mean, you could still put a knot in it, but I don't think fringe looks very good with an extra little knot, so this looks just fine here. All right, keep going. I'm gonna keep going around and I'll meet you back up when you get to the end. What do you guys think? Do you like this bind off to get a fringe? <clears throat> the live audience. <laughs> How are you all? I have missed hanging out. <laughs> I'm setting up um, some more of these here. You like it, Ada? That's so good. Am I shouting at you? I feel like I'm getting really loud. Nice, Bridget says. Nice. I'm gonna get a few of these lined up. I think it's good to get like three of them together at a time instead of just one at a time here. So this is kind of cool. I can't wait to see this. Oh my word. I think my mom will probably really like this because she likes to go to fancy schmancy stuff. And I think she will enjoy it. Yes, I do. And her birthday is coming up. Gorgeous Gala says an easy bind off. Yes, I think it's an easy bind off too. I think it can be kind of messy, you know, just because there's so many like little fine um, fringe around here. But you could keep wrapping and cutting them if it was just, if you were, you know, if you didn't want to have like a whole bunch of them. But boy, if you were going on a um, on a trip or something, I mean, I guess you could, and then pre-cut them all and finish it on the trip. I don't know that I'd want to carry my S loom though. You missed me lots. Oh, you're so sweet. I missed you guys too. I really did. Oh wow, what is on my hand? I have like this black mark on my hand. Did I have that on there earlier? What's going on? That is the mom thing. Yes, I licked my hand. <laughs> I licked my finger. That is the mom thing. Okay, Christine says, I have a question. Has anyone done a corner to corner on the KV Afghan loom? If so, how many pegs do you use? I want to make one for my nephew. He's 10. You mean like making like a like a granny type? Like Brenda Myers does? Like where she's converted and done crochet on the loom? Is that what you're asking, Christine? Oh, that was my ice machine. Oh, well, not, not that machine. It's the ice maker on the refrigerator. So I don't know, Christine. Bunches and bunches, Gala says. <laughs> no, an actual blanket? Yeah, a corner to corner blanket, but on the Afghan loom. Um, I, now I have a triangular um, shawl that, um, that I do, um, you know, and so then you, you can work your way back and then I have a Pico layout set that shows you how to make it basically in a mitered blanket and so you go back that way and that can kind of be corner to corner or you can use the, um, the if okay, there's a Lunet blanket with the Lion Brand. Um, I make sort of a dishcloth thing, but it's actually a Lion Brand um, thing and it's a corner to corner. It's a line brand pattern, but I've got a video for it. Um, it makes like a 20 by 20, like a kid's blanket thing, but you could do like a 40 by 40 and put four of them together and have like a really cool divided thing. Or you could make it 60 by 60 and um, do uh, three big squares, uh, like three across and three down, so nine squares. And that would be cool. That would be 
a bunch of corner to corners put together, so that's not really the same thing, but <laughs> I'm trying to give you options with things that I have myself. Is that wrong? <laughs> okay, I did not measure this out. Hold on. Okay. Can y'all tell my voice <clears throat> is still not perfect? I did, yes, I did a video about it on the Martha Stewart loom. Yes, that was the one for Lion Brand. It's 80, I want to say, just because someone asked me this question the other day, I mean, a similar question related to that video, um, but I think it's 87 pegs on the large gauge version. And so I don't think, because she wanted to do 40 by 40, and so I suggested to her that she do four of them. So she had four quadrants. And so she did two across and two, why is this not going through? Um, two, uh, two up, two down, so four. Um, because 87 pegs times two, I don't think the Martha Stewart loom is big enough for that. But for some reason, this is not, okay, there we go. Just trying to be, I was trying to be careful. You love these colors? Yeah, they are really, really yummy. Oh my gosh, I forgot how much I loved this when I started it. And and then I really kind of got to where I enjoyed seeing it as a background drop, a backdrop. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna finish it because it looks really pretty, but now I'm just like, okay, now I'm just being lazy now. So do y'all ever do that? Do you justify it? And I know y'all weren't using, most people aren't using things as display pieces like I am, but um, really, I mean, come on, who's who's looking at it display-wise, unless I have it in the background of a video, right? And that's not very often. So does that help, Christine? I had like a really backward way of answering your question. So I think if I remember my math right, there's 19 of these sets. Oh, did I get this even? Yeah. This is kind of reminding me of the Trolls movie <laughs> because it's got hot pink and then it's got like this really fun green in it and it's got some browns and some orange, but it's got all this sparkle in it. I mean, check that out, y'all. I mean, look at that. That's really cool. Oh, hey, um, Gala, have you left yet? Because um, I have a coupon code. If anybody wants it um, for 24% off in my Etsy store, just send me an email to design at goodknitkisses.com and I will um, send you out that coupon code. Um, I'm doing that because I'd really like to build my um, email list up to do the newsletters. And sometimes I think it's just easier when I add you guys because I've had some people have a problem when they try and add it. They they try and register as a user on my site, which doesn't really work. That's not really the way it's supposed to work. So anyway, if you guys want a coupon code, it it works until the end of November. And um, yeah, so you could get the book or you can get any patterns or whatever. And you got like $5 uh, minimum purchase, which is not much because I have several patterns that are about that. So anyway, hopefully that works. Almost done, almost done. Got a few more. Y'all have plans to be with your family this Thanksgiving? Got, who's, who's, who's up making things already, like making pies and all that stuff for our friends in the States here? I'm going over to my mom's tomorrow. We have a showing from like nine to 10 tomorrow. And then I'm promised to go um, to my mom's to help make stuff. And um, we're gonna, um, sorry, I'm working off camera right now. Um, we're gonna make pies and things. So um, I promise to be there at 9.30, which works out um, but since we've got the showing and I just found out about it. Oh gosh, I have like a, there it goes. 
I had a notification on my screen from, from Instagram and I'm like, why is this not going off? You love to watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade? That's that's cool. Yeah, that is that's such a fun memory. Has anyone ever got to go to the big parade? You made my scrubbies today on the Blue Loom. Ooh, you did 12. Ooh, Bridget, send me a picture. I want to see. Put it. Will you put it on the main Good Night Kisses page? I wonder how big it was. Did you measure it? You did when you were small, Ada? Oh, that must have been a really cool memory. Um, my my cousin, I've got a bunch of cousins, one of my cousins, um, she was, um, I don't know if she was in the, she was in the drill team at college and also in high school. And I'm trying to remember if it was a college or high school, but they got to go um, and um, be in the parade, like right with the Rockettes and do all their little kick stuff and everything. It was really cool. You just found me. What am I making? Um, I'm binding off, Janet. Um, uh, I'm binding off of my Dewdrop shawl, and um, this is an easier bind off uh, than one I have on a main video that I originally released this a few years back. Um, and this is adding fringe as you go instead of a regular bind off. So I have the live stitches on the end, and then I'm looping through and putting the fringe on to finish it off instead of, um, you know, instead of actually having to do a bind off because I have these big drop stitches that are holding behind here. And um, anyway, I'll show you, you'll see it in a minute because I'm almost done, I'm almost at the end here. Um, gotta get a few more of these. You posted it and you didn't measure, Bridget? Oh, I gotta go see it. I've missed a few of these posts recently. Like for some reason my, um, Facebook thing when I click on somebody's that says a published a post it's not going to their their published post and it's like they changed something with the app and like it's notifying me in like a really weird way and I, I'm not anyway I gotta learn how to navigate it again because like there's something there's something up with it what you can't see is I'm getting my fringe ready um, off camera <coughs> excuse me Okay, I've got, I'm on the fourth from the last set here. So I'm putting my hook through. I pick it up with my loom tool. I think it was Janet earlier. Um, I'm picking it up with my loom tool and then I grab my fringe that it's all doubled over. There's three strands. And then I put the hook through and I'm using a small crochet hook. I go turn it and go through the teardrop and then go around the fringe, uh, around the end, and then pull it through again, okay? So if you've ever seen like fringe on a carpet or whatever, that it looks kind of like that. So that's really all I'm doing. So pick it up with my loom tool, because that's easier. One, two, three, because they're sets of three. And then I just, and you could do sets of four if you want, really, um, whatever sets you did. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make sure my fringe is easy. It's off the side here. I had to make sure it's even, like my ends are all lined up approximately. I'm not, I don't try and make it like absolutely perfect. All right, pull that through. Two more, two more. We're almost there, y'all. Got to get this all lined up because I got kind of a mess over here. Got one and two. Because I'm going to turn the, I'm going to start filming again like where I'm talking, like I'm doing the final tutorial. You guys are seeing kind of the behind the scenes today. All right. There we go. Okay, I have two more. Okay. Okay, we're coming to the end. I have the last set of three, and then I have one more set of four that I'm gonna do. So let's get these three on here. 
that through. And then the last set with four, and you can see my little D for dewdrop, and then I have little dots next to these. These are the end ones that we had. So one, two, three, four. They are all off. Oh my gosh, look, it's almost done. Get that last loop over here. Pull it on through. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm going to pull this off and I'll show you in a moment what this looks like. So, I'm not showing this on the final video, but y'all are going to see me pull this off. So, I'm just being careful. I guess I should sew this on here. As you pull this off, be careful to take all your dew drops off if they're not yet and kind of just loop them through the center here. We're going to let it feed down the middle of this loom where your knitting normally goes. That's a good place for it. I'm doing kind of a combination of my hands in this. It looks like a big mess, but it's not, I promise. If you start pulling it, you, you will pull a dew drop and kind of make a mess. So getting it off the loom carefully is important. Okay. This is what that looks like. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. So it's um, it's it's all groupings. Like at the end of all these columns, this is where your fringe is ending, and these dewdrops are now completely um, bare and unashamed. <laughs> and look at that. How delicate that is. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I think my mom's gonna love it. So if you'll give me a moment, I'm gonna go put this on the mannequin and you will see the final result. Okay, y'all, so I'm, I'm putting this on my mannequin here, just to hold on. If I had a, a person with me, I would put it on her. Okay, so here we go. And I'm gonna show you the, um, here we go. Let me, un I'm gonna unwrap you from my, Pod here. <sighs> okay. Look at this. <clears throat> and here is the final result here. Isn't this beautiful? So this is the dewdrop shawl. All wrapped up in its glory. Isn't that pretty? So I talk about it on my other video for the dewdrop, but how you do it is you carefully um, fold this up and then you would put this in a nice little plastic bag and um, give it the care instructions on it. And uh, let me pull this down so you can see what that looks like. See it falling? So the care instructions you could put on the um, plastic bag and um, you could even write the date. This this hangs more. I'm just kind of doing that so you can see it. 
um, but you could put the date that you made it and um, kind of give them instructions about um, keeping it in the bag so that it doesn't pull out these uh, drops. Isn't that beautiful? So the other thing that you can do is um, it can be gathered up and worn really short, like more like a scarf, like this, like that. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's another way to wear it. So I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial today and uh, your loved ones or whoever you make it for or sell it to will enjoy it as much as I think my mother is going to enjoy this. All right. Well, thank you for joining me again at Good Knit Kisses. You have a great day and happy looming. Bye-bye. Did y'all like that? <laughs> so um, if you want to stick around, I'm going to set up again and I'm going to um, show you how to cast on and do the main stitch because when this is a live video, you get the ending first and then the beginning. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll take pictures of it and it'll be really nice and I'll probably do some other kind of ending thing, but I just wanted to do that while we're there. So um, anyway, <laughs> I have a daughter who's up here and she wants to say goodnight to me. So hold on. Hi. I have something that needs to be taken care of medically. Uh oh. I got something. Okay, Daddy can do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. You just saw me. <laughs> All right. Let me flip the camera. I'll get my tripod all set up again. With the black yarn, it would make a spider web look lovely. Yeah. Yeah, you could do black with like a um, a pretty silver in there, and that'd be nice. All right, so you're going to need your S loom. Yeah, I'm using the knitting board one today. And I'm sorry if I missed any questions. I'm going to go flip through. Hold on one second. Oh, everybody loves it. Yay! Yay! I'm so glad y'all like it. Okay. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Let me get this all ready. I'll flip it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on the Dewdrop Shawl, but today we are working on it on the big Afghan loom. This is a big S loom. This particular loom is from Knitting Board. I'm going to show you how to set up. You're going to cast on. We're going to work the main stitch. I'll show you how to bind off in a super easy way, putting the fringe directly on there, and then show you what it looks like in the end. Let's get started. Okay, so today you're gonna need your S loom. You're gonna need a uh, lightweight uh, yarn, um, really any yarn you wanna use, but this particular one is more of a fingering weight. It's got some lovely sparkle in it, and it's a smooth yarn. Smooth yarn is best for the dewdrop. You will need a small crochet hook. This is an, a US size E, and the um, uh, loom hook tool, whichever one is your preference, and then of course your scissors. And then you're also gonna wanna get just a standard um, eight and a half by 11 book. Um, I'm using it to measure around and make my fringe, so I've got that off to the side. Of course, this is the Good Knit Kisses book. If you don't know it, this is the Loom Knitting Guide and Patterns book. And you can also find the pattern to the Dew Drop in here, as well as some other patterns and goodies and charts. All right, let's get started. All right, y'all. I'm getting, I'm getting prepped off to the side. What you guys, what you can't see. Okay. All right. I also failed to mention, <laughs> you will need a um, some kind of permanent marker or way to mark up your loom. If you notice, I have little black 
marks on here. I came up with this several years ago, right after I, when I was doing the review uh, and figured out what I could do double knitting wise. And so that's what the black marks are. But this blue one is marks for the dew drop. And so what I've got here is this is the starting peg. It's, it's noted with a triangle here. That's the normal start, but I'm going one peg over to the right and I put a D. It might look like an O to you, but I wrote a D from the other direction. So, um, so this is gonna be my starting peg here and this little dot, dot, dot. So there's three dots after this dewdrop. That's my first section of um, the dewdrop column. And then I'm gonna go back to these two dots here and then an S is written for skip. And then I do two dots next to it. Now you don't have to write do dots everywhere else, but this two S's and the two dots are pretty important here. So two dots and an S. Um, so what you're doing is this particular one, um, you could write an S here, one, two, three. So three on this side of the D for drop because we're gonna skip these three pegs um, I'm sorry, I keep saying three pegs, there's two pegs. So we're gonna skip, let me just do that here. Skip and skip, okay? So this is the starting peg with a D. I know, it sounds funny. We're gonna make a slip knot, wrap it around, pull the back over the front, back over the front again. That's how I make it. You don't have to make yours that way. Put that on there, tighten it up, and let that fall through. And we're gonna do a double E-wrap cast on um, you can also call it yarn over cast on. Um, double E wrap is if I wrap the um, this slip knot first and then knit over. And the yarn over cast on is if I don't wrap that again. So I'm going to wrap each peg twice and knit over and tighten it up. One, two. And then one, two. Okay, so now I've got one, two, three, four pegs. I'm gonna go to the back here and I'm gonna skip this one and skip this one and go around that first one that I had a dot. And I'm also gonna go around the second one that I had the dot and come to the front again. And now I'm gonna work the pegs here. So all pegs on this front side, we're gonna work. So I'm gonna double E wrap, cast on this one. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. One, two, okay, and then three. So a sequence of three. The first four and the last four, which will be over here, are the only ones that get a set of four together. So these are three. So now I'm gonna go back, and this is the only time I skip one in the back. This peg right here is gonna get skipped, so I have an S on the peg, okay? So we're gonna go around one, two. These are our holding pegs. And this is what creates this nice long drop stitch. I'm gonna wrap around twice, knit over, and do that three pegs in a row. Oops. Okay, and then now I'm gonna go back. And now I'm not skipping anything. See how I've got these two here, and these two were here. And then we're gonna go to the front again and knit over, and I'm making sure that I'm pulling all that extra slack. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm trying not to make it too tight, but um, this first <clears throat> this first set might be a little tight just because I'm trying to get that double E-wrap on there nice and snug. So make sure your, your first row is worked well where you've got your pattern set because once you set this pattern, um, it, will, it will make it much easier as you go along. So this would be a really great gift. It's, it's actually a very easy pattern. Um, <clears throat> you could make up several of these for gifts, but um, they're definitely going to be fragile. Um, as far as um, I wouldn't recommend someone just hang it up on a sh like some kind of rack or something, or I mean, you could fold it and put it in a drawer, but um, quite honestly, the best way to store it is gonna be put in, um, fold it up and put it in a nice large um, plastic storage bag, like a um, 32 gallon, not a 32 gallon, a um, one gallon, um, or maybe one of those larger 
um, those larger bags, Ziploc, I don't know what other brands, maybe Glad or something, it doesn't matter, but just some kind of bag that prevents anything from snagging, because this is like a lace work. Okay, just continue around and I'll meet you back um, when you've got about 18 sets of these done. Everybody who's joining me, have you guys done and made a dew drop? Tell me if you have or say you have not. I've had several people say, I haven't finished mine. It's still sitting there. I'm afraid to bind it off. Now you can go in as little amount of rows if you want. You could do, um, like I'm gonna do 100 rows in this. I'm just telling the live audience this. Um, you could do 100 rows of this for that nice large shawl, or you could do um, even just 15 to 20 or so for a, um, a scarf. Now of course it's not a warm scarf. It's gonna be um, very much a showcase kind of piece, um, but, <laughs> It makes a keyhole scarf real well because you can work it inside itself um, very easily. You're gonna head to bed? All right, have a good night, Ada. couple of places where I'm off for some reason. I'm just going to fix that right now. Okay, so I'm down at the end and counting my first set of four and then starting with the next set, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around. When I talk about sets, I'm talking about sets of three and then there's the part that goes in the back. Um, so the three sets um, are one set. So when I get to here, this is 18. And when I get to the 19th one, that's the one that's gonna have four. So the beginning has four and the end has four. 
and there's 19 sets. Or if you're counting how many drops you have, there's like 18 of them. So you're gonna mark your loom. What I did is in the back here, I, I put a dot next to the last four, just so I remembered, because this is where I, I left off when I did my first test. And then um, I've got a D, it looks like a, it may look like a circle to you, but this is a D for dew drops whenever I work with this. So the ending is down here, it's a D, and then I've got one, two, three dots, so I remember these are the four that go together. <clears throat> so now that I've got my last holding pegs here, I'm going to go around, double E-wrap. Okay, just as before. And if you notice I'm, how I did that, I'm just, I wrapped the bottom one and I sort of put my, uh, my tool on there to kind of grab it and then it's already ready to loop over there. So that's kind of my quick way to do it. There is no purling on this project and um, I love it. It's super easy. All right, so we're gonna, this is it worked in a slip panel. So the slip stitch is the first stitch that meaning you skip that first peg. And that's why we have four because every other time when it comes back through, it's actually gonna look like that column is four stitches. If I only did three, it would look like the ends were only two stitches long in the column of knits. So now we're just gonna follow the patterning that we've already got set on here. So we're gonna go around one, two, three, go around this holding peg, one, two, three, and then go around the next holding peg. One, two, three, around the peg. And you get the idea. So we're just going in the sets of three. And uh, make sure that you don't, um, you don't cross uh, your holding pegs in the back. Make sure that the previous knit one is at the top. Um, the previous worked row, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, your current worked row is on top of the previous row because um, once you've got a bunch of these on here, I'll show you how um, you need to move them because you can't get all the rows on that you're gonna want um, to make a shawl. Now for a scarf, you may be able to use the holding area to hold all the rows you want if your yarn is lightweight enough, but for, um, for the shawl that I'm doing here, it is not. All right, so continue uh, going around in this pattern and meet me back at the end. At the end of your row, actually. Sorry. Okay, so continue going around in the same pattern and meet me back at the end of the row. I'm gonna say stuff funny like that, I have to say it again. You can't wait to see it, Ava? Eva? <laughs> we had Ada, who was here earlier. Now we have Eva. Eva. Wow. <laughs> right. Sorry, I'm shaking the. I probably am shaking the camera and I'm not realizing it. Apologies. I like the sparkly yarn. I can't wait to show you this. If you're just joining me in the beginning of this video, I actually showed the ending. So I think you're really gonna like it. You can use this as a scarf or a shawl, the, the way the shawl is. If you make it the 100 rows, which I'll say here, because what I'm doing is I'm actually filming my live tutorial and then I edit it later and it resides on my YouTube channel. So if you're new, to me, um, if you'll go to youtube.com slash goodknitkisses um, or look up Good Knit Kisses on YouTube and subscribe to my channel, um, you'll get, and make sure your notifications are that you'll get new stuff, but you'll, you'll get my notifications of new videos coming out and I do tutorials on knitting with needles and loom and crochet. <clears throat> okay, so I've come to the end here and I'll go all the way uh, to the end on this one, okay? So yes, this is gonna have four on it and that is correct. So we're gonna knit that over and then just work all your stitches. So the loom got woven around the way that we did. It's not real weaving, but um, 
It's just you're wrapping it around. All right. And then um, because the S loom can be um, kind of finicky and some people feel like it just takes forever, one of the things you can do is um, I will knit over in segments. And so say, let's, let, I'll show you how I do my segment. So I go around till I get um, about either halfway, um, like to this little quarter area, a quarter of the loom. Um, halfway for this project that I'm working on, but if I was using the entire loom, halfway would be to the middle of this big circle over here. Um, so I've gotten about about half of my project for this thing done. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping the next row, even though I'm not done with this first row. So I just push everything down and go ahead and slip this first uh, part here okay just so slipping the panel is just skipping that first piece here and we're gonna dump, we're gonna go around and e-wrap or remember after you do the three here you gotta follow this holding peg back here wrap around and go all the way around now you can also knit over as you go so if you want to go ahead and just follow it all the way around you could have like say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this one. So this is a little shortcut for you. So um, I've never shown anyone doing this way. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has figured out. But if you, um, if you wrap your panel in such a way, sorry, I just totally dropped that stitch. Um, you can kind of follow along and get almost feel like you're getting two rows done at the same time. See this? So I've already, I'm on the second row here. Or, yeah. But you gotta make sure and follow all that as you go. Don't miss, don't miss it. So here we go, I'm gonna go all the way around. You'll get what the idea when I get all the way over there, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. So just keep going. And I wouldn't worry about um, counting your rows just yet. Um, you know, don't worry about uh, counting like how many rows you need for the shawl yet. But I will say that you will be doing 100 rows for the shawl, which really isn't that much. It really isn't when you're considering like if you were doing a blanket or something like that. Um, this is only using half of the loom. Um, and make sure and don't connect these here. You see, I, I started to go over here to connect it, but you gotta make sure and leave this a blank space here. So this is, uh, the way I'm doing this here, this is to get around um, uh, having to move this turning back and forth. M rotating this big loom back and forth. It can be very awkward on this larger loom, especially when you're working this dewdrop shawl because after you get several rows done, um, you're gonna not wanna wear a ring or any, any rings or jewelry that it can get caught up on. Uh, make sure that um, whatever chair you're in or something is not gonna get caught. If you have any animals or something, um, you might wanna put uh, attach like a, a bag underneath or something to kind of catch your knitting um, because it is delicate. Okay, those long drops can pull and I'm just, I'm just warning you. It is very pretty, but I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay, so I'm, I'm where um, I've got two loops of my peg that I had wrapped previously going this direction. And so now my working strand has caught up. So what I can do is Go ahead and, and stop working on the working yarn here and go along and um, knit over this other row that I had before. Because remember, I had only worked part of the loom.
Okay, and push that down. And now go back to where my working strand is. The working strand is this yarn that's coming and it's attached to your ball, your skein, your hank, whatever. And if I say the name of a yarn term and you're new and you're not sure what I'm talking about, I actually have a video called um, Yarn Class 101. I think that's my name of it. <laughs> it's Anyway, it teaches you the different um, ways that uh, balls of yarn come and um, how you can uh, take a hank and wind it into a cake um, or a, a ball of yarn. This particular yarn came in a hank. It's from a, um, a show, a fiber arts show that's local. And I got it, um, it normally go, comes from a, what's called a local yarn shop. It's, it's a high-end yarn shop. And um, so it comes in, in a form that is a massive giant circle. And so I put on a yarn swift that looks sort of like an umbrella. And then I wind it with a ball winder and then I'm able to get it into a nice, what's called a cake. And it's like having your own skein of yarn. And then whenever I do stuff like that, that's in a really del delicate um, yarn, sometimes I'll, I'll put it, go ahead and put it in like a sandwich bag or something like that, or some kind of, some kind of bag to protect it and so that it doesn't un unwind itself. Okay, so. I had wrapped to a certain point. Now I'm gonna have to um, go through and knit over this one that was from that first row. So you'll have your cast on row and you'll know the very first row doesn't count. So the way you, know, you can count your rows is this is, this is stitch one and this is this is so this is a cast on one row and then this is actually row one so you can count how many rows you have just by counting how many drops are and if you forget I mean this is fine in in the 100 rows it's not going to mean anything so you're going to continue along until you get 100 of these but before we go on I want to show you how to um, work these extra rows that are the holding pegs um, I'm going to move these stitches over and go ahead and get these last ones on the loom and show you how to um, get the um, get the holding pegs out correctly so that you don't um, actually cause a problem with your your drop stitches. If you if you take these off the back here too soon, they um, will actually have a problem with the length of them and they won't be consistent throughout the project. So there is a trick to it. So don't jump ahead of me. Please wait for this tip. work back and forth until you have about five or six of these on your holding pegs back here and then you'll take the top two off okay and you'll hold them with one hand and so you'll have the top two and then you'll drop any of the extra drops you have here it doesn't matter how many you have on here just fill this thing up as much as you can stand it before they start popping off and then remove the top two keeping that tension on there by holding it and remove any of the extra ones, just let them drop down. And then just put these back on and then work your way down the loom. So I would pick these up here, take this one off and then put these back on. So the part where I said when things are hanging down, that's these drop stitches here. These, these are gonna have start hanging down. You're gonna have a lot of this coming out and you don't want it to get caught on rings and things like this. So if I was knitting this uh, up, I would not wear my ring because it would get caught. So um, it will meet me back up in a moment and you will see 
all the hundred rows done and we will be back at the beginning side and do the bind off with the fringe. Okay, so everyone who's joined me live, you've actually seen me complete the whole thing if you started in the beginning. For people who jumped on after, I'm gonna go ahead a little bonus so you don't have to like go and watch the whole video again to see it. Uh, I'm gonna go jump over here and you can see the shawl. Yay, okay, you ready? <laughs> uh, let me get, get, get up here. <laughs> All right, let me flip this around. This is the shawl. Now I have it um, as if someone was gonna wear it sort of bunched up. Okay. This is the shawl here. Isn't that pretty? So you can pull it straight out like that. And I have to, oh, I actually have this part. I need to, I need to cut this. This is my beginning um, tail end that I haven't uh, finished yet. So I can just weave that in and cut it. Uh, but this is the dew drop with all the fringe on it. And then if we spin that around, you can see what that would look like wrapped around someone. Isn't that gorgeous? So if you want it wider than that, you just need to cast on more pegs. That's it. And see how these long columns, it just ends in this dripping fringe. It's about eight and a half inches or so of fringe. Well, thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for joining me today, tonight. <laughs> I hope you have a great day and I will see you, uh, probably see you early in the morning tomorrow. If I don't get a chance, I will come and you'll see me uh, film. Uh, if you're watching me wa live, um, I'll either do it in the early in the morning or um, do another evening broadcast. So y'all have a great day and uh, an evening. Bye-bye everyone.